Welcome tech enthusiasts and curious minds. I'm Amit, and you're tuned into Techno Curious, the podcast that explores the fascinating world of technology and scientific wonders. Today, we're diving into a topic that has captivated imaginations for decades. Debunked, the moon landing mysteries. Get ready to separate fact from fiction as we unravel the truth behind one of humanity's greatest achievements. Let's embark on this cosmic journey together. You know, some of the most enduring mysteries, well, they aren't tucked away in like ancient tombs or lost cities. Mm -hmm. They're about what happened in, well, one of humankind's greatest achievements, right. the moon landing. Of course. And we are diving right into that today thanks to this incredible document you sent us. Oh, wow. It's like the ultimate cheat sheet to moon landing conspiracy theories, complete with counter arguments and everything. It's a topic that never seems to fade, does it? I mean, there's something about pushing those boundaries of human experience that, I don't know, always invites a little skepticism, I guess. It really does. But as with any good mystery, the key is separating speculation from, you know, cold, hard evidence. For sure. Well, let's start with one of the most iconic images from the mission. The American flag seemingly waving in the breeze on the moon. What gives? It's a great example of how I think, you know, our earthly experience can sometimes trip us up when we're thinking about space. Right. Like, on Earth, a waving flag means wind, right? Yeah. But on the moon, there's no atmosphere to speak of, so so how could it be a breeze? Right. The answer lies in the flag's design. They designed it. It was mounted on a telescoping pole, and that was to ensure it appeared unfurled and taut, and you know, that created the illusion of waving in the lunar wind. That makes sense. I mean, they wanted that picture-perfect moment for the history books, but what about the way the flag moves? It really does seem like it's rippling in the wind. Okay, so think about it. The astronauts were physically planting the flag right. Right. And that motion, if you combine that with the lack of air resistance, because it's a vacuum, would cause the flag to sway back and forth. And it's just like a pendulum that keeps swinging, so that initial movement would take a while to dissipate in the moon's low-gravity environment. So simple physics at play, not some elaborate Hollywood magic trick. Exactly. Speaking of Hollywood, that brings us to another popular theory. If the landing was real, where are all the stars in the photos? It's just a vast, empty blackness up there. Did, did NASA forget to hang up the backdrop? It's actually, it's easier to think about it like this. Have you ever tried to take a picture of a dim star with a brightly lit city in the background? Oh, yeah. You usually just end up with a washed out image where the stars are completely obscured by the city lights. Right, right. It's the same idea. So you're saying that the lunar landscape being so brightly lit by the sun would have a similar effect, making the stars too faint to appear in the photos. Exactly. <laughs> it's not that the stars weren't there. They were just outshone by the intensity of the sunlight reflecting off the moon's surface. The camera settings needed to capture the astronauts and the lunar landscape, well, they wouldn't have picked up those fainter points of light. Okay, that makes sense. But what about the shadows in some of the pictures? Conspiracy theorists point out how they seem to be falling in different directions, suggesting multiple light sources, as if they were on, like, a stage set. Here's the thing. The moon's surface is surprisingly uneven. I think much more so than we typically realize from Earth. Mm. You have craters hills, and slopes, all of which would cause shadows to be cast at different angles depending on their position relative to the sun. It's like, you know how a single streetlight can make your shadow look distorted if you're standing on an incline? Oh, yeah, yeah. Same concept. So it's not multiple light sources, but rather the lunar terrain playing tricks on our perception. Precisely. And then add to that the wide-angle lenses used for those panoramic shots, which can also distort perspective, and it's easy to see how those shadows might appear misleading. It really makes you appreciate the challenges of photography in such an alien environment. For sure. This next one always sends shivers down my spine, though. What about the Van Allen radiation belts? You know, those zones of intense radiation surrounding Earth. Right. Wouldn't they have been lethal to the astronauts on their journey to the moon? It's true. The Van Allen belts are, you know, they're a significant radiation hazard. Right. And anyone traveling through them would need protection. Right. It's dangerous stuff. Yeah. So how how did they manage to navigate those radioactive zones without, well, turning into superheroes? OK, so think of it like finding a safe path through, I don't know, a jungle or something. OK. You know, their trajectory was carefully planned to bypass the densest regions of the belts and really to minimize the time spent within them. 
Makes sense. And of course, the Apollo spacecraft had aluminum shielding to further reduce that radiation exposure for the astronauts inside. So a bit of careful planning and some good old-fashioned engineering saved the day. But what about something else our listener brought up, the sea rock photo? You know the one where a rock seems to have a letter C on it, like a prop marker? It does sound a bit like something out of a movie set. Yeah, that's one of those, you know, fascinating examples of how a simple detail can just kind of spiral into this, this full-blown conspiracy. Right. But when you look at the high-resolution images of that same scene, the mysterious C just vanishes. Vanishing C. Now that sounds even more like a magic trick. What's the explanation there? Most likely culprit is, I don't know, maybe a stray hair or a fiber that got caught on one of the photographic prints during the developing process. Oh. Yeah, you got to remember these images went through a lot of handling and processing before they were ever released to the public. That's true, yeah. Things happen. So case closed on the mysterious sea rock. But while we're on the topic of lunar close-ups, our listener is also curious about the lack of a visible blast crater beneath the lunar module. Right. Shouldn't there be a giant scorch mark where it touched down with all that power? That's a common misconception, and it's based on how we picture rocket landings on Earth. Right. But remember, the moon's gravity is much weaker, and the lunar module's engine was designed to throttle down significantly during its final descent. Okay. It was more like... I don't know, a controlled hover than a fiery crash landing. So a softer touch than we might imagine. Yeah. But wouldn't there still be some disturbance on the lunar surface? Of course, the engine's exhaust would have blown away some of that fine lunar dust, mm -hmm. or, or regolith as it's called. But you wouldn't necessarily see a deep, well-defined crater. Yeah. More like a subtle depression in the surrounding area. That makes sense. But what about the missing tapes? You know, the original recordings of the moon landing? That always seemed a bit suspicious, even to me. The case of the missing tapes is one that I think gets blown out of proportion. But there's likely a simple and honestly a somewhat disappointing explanation. Okay. In those days, data storage was incredibly expensive. Right. And it wasn't uncommon to, you know, reuse tapes recording over older data. So a bit of a bureaucratic mishap rather than a sinister cover-up? Most likely, yeah. And what's important is that despite those missing tapes, we still have a wealth of data from the missions. You know, we have transcripts, photographs, film footage from other sources, telemetry data from tracking stations around the world. Oh, wow. And of course, the moon rocks. Speaking of which, the moon rocks themselves seem like pretty irrefutable evidence. Hmm. Scientists worldwide have examined them. What more could you ask for? You're absolutely right. The moon rocks are a treasure trove of information about the moon's geological history. Yeah. And they're not just any rocks, you see. Okay. They have a very unique mineral composition and contain isotopes that you wouldn't find, you know, naturally occurring on Earth. So even if someone wanted to create a hoax, they'd have to fabricate these incredibly specific geological details. Right. That seems like a far greater challenge than actually going to the moon and bringing back the real deal. Precisely. And let's not forget, these rocks weren't just studied by NASA. Yeah. They were shared with research institutions all over the world. I mean, everywhere. Wow. If there were any doubts about their authenticity, scientists would have raised flags immediately. Right. You know, it wouldn't have gone unnoticed. No, that's what I call peer review on a global scale. <laughs> okay, before we wrap up this incredible deep dive, there's one more visual detail from the moon landing footage that seems to spark a lot of debate. Those slow bounding steps the astronauts take, it almost looks like slow motion, you know? Is that just clever editing to simulate low gravity? It does have a certain, I don't know, otherworldly quality to it, doesn't it? That's that's precisely how it would look moving around in lunar gravity. Right. You know, it's only about one-sixth of Earth's gravity, so you'd weigh considerably less. Yeah. The astronauts, they described it as like a bouncy, almost floating sensation. Oh, wow. I can only imagine. Did it take some getting used to moving around like that? Oh, absolutely. And remember, they weren't just, you know, taking a leisurely stroll up there. Right. They were setting up experiments, collecting samples, maneuvering in those those bulky spacesuits, all while adapting to this this entirely different gravitational pull. Yeah, talk about a challenging day at the office. It makes you wonder about the psychology of it all. Speaking of which, one of the, I guess you could say, Darker theories out there suggest that the deaths of some figures associated with the Apollo program were part of a, like, cover-up. Hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it's a sensitive topic, and I think it's it's crucial to approach it with respect for, for the lives lost. Right. Um, while there have been tragedies associated with 
you know, with the space program, attributing those events to to a conspiracy theory really disrespects the memories of those individuals and their families. It's a stark reminder that space exploration, for all its wonder, carries, you know, inherent risks. Precise. And those risks were were very real for the astronauts and engineers who dedicate their lives to the Apollo program. Mm -hmm. We should honor their legacy by grounding our understanding in, you know, in facts and evidence. Mm -hmm. On that note, there's another visual detail that conspiracy theorists often bring up. The apparent lack of an exhaust plume when the lunar module lifted off from the moon. Right. Shouldn't there have been this massive burst of fire? You know, it's a question that comes up often, and it really relates to the the unique challenges of operating in space. Oh, okay. You see, the lunar module used a, a special type of fuel. Okay. Hypergolic propellant. And basically, it ignites on contact, meaning it doesn't require, like, an external ignition source. Okay, so no spark plug needed. Exactly. But why wouldn't it produce a visible plume like we see with rockets on Earth? Okay, so that comes down to the environment. Okay. On Earth, a rocket's exhaust plume is visible because the hot gases, they interact with the atmosphere, right? Yeah. yeah. Causing the scattering of light. But in the vacuum of space, there's no air to interact with those exhaust gases. So the flame is there, it's just not visible to the naked eye in that environment. Precisely, yeah. It's like, imagine if you turned off the lights in a room. Oh, okay. The objects are still there. You just can't see them without, you know, the light reflecting off of them. That's a great way to put it. It's the same idea. And it highlights just how important it is to consider the specific, you know, context of the moon landing when, when evaluating these claims. Sure. One final detail that often gets brought up, those seemingly misaligned shadows in some of the photos. Right. Some people point to that as evidence of, you know, multiple light sources being used, suggesting it was all staged on a film set. Yeah. The, you know, the human brain is wired to look for patterns, and sometimes it plays tricks on us, especially when we're looking at two-dimensional representations of, you know, three-dimensional spaces. So you're saying it's it's all an optical illusion? In a way, yes. Okay. The moon's surface, as we as we discussed earlier, is far from flat. Right. You have craters, hills, variations in elevation, all of which can cause distortions in how shadows appear in photographs, particularly when you know viewed out of context. It seems like every time we delve into one of these theories, we we end up uncovering some fascinating aspect of like physics, photography, or engineering. Yeah, it's all connected. So much of this comes down to understanding the, the science behind the scenes. Exactly. And the moon landing was this extraordinary feat of human ingenuity, but it was grounded in, in very real science and technology, mm. much of which continues to influence our world today. It's been an incredible journey, you know, debunking these myths and, and uncovering the truths behind this this pivotal moment in human history. It really has. As we wrap up, what would you say is the most the most important takeaway for our listeners? You know, it's natural to be curious, to question what we see and hear. Right. In fact, that that kind of critical thinking is essential. Yeah. But I think when we, you know, when we delve into these extraordinary claims, we need to hold those claims to an equally extraordinary standard of evidence. Well said. Don't just take someone's word for it. Right. Do your research, explore different perspectives, and remember, the truth, while sometimes more complex, is often far more interesting than fiction. Absolutely. And the moon landing was a testament to, to human ambition, perseverance, and ingenuity. And, you know, let's continue to explore the universe with that same spirit of curiosity and, and critical thinking. Beautifully put. To our listener, thank you for sending us on this thought-provoking deep dive. Yeah, thank you. We hope you've enjoyed separating fact from fiction as much as we have. It's been fun. And for those of you eager to learn more, we've included links to some fascinating resources in our show notes. Think about. Until next time, keep exploring.